Now, white collar job cuts are coming to United Airlines. Phil LeBeau joins us now with more. Good morning, Phil. Hey, Joe, this is the first of what we will see likely for the entire airline industry play out over the next several months. Yesterday, United told all of its management and administrative employees, about 11,000 in the entire company, that at least, at least 30 percent of those jobs will be eliminated starting October 1st. Now, the rest of the company, another 90,000, were also receiving a memo. And essentially in that memo, they said there will be changes. There are also reports that separately the pilots were told it could be as many as 30 percent of their jobs will be cut in the fall. Remember, it's just a couple of weeks ago that United Airlines received approximately $5 billion through the CARES Act. That is uh, included in there was $3.5 billion in a grant, money that was given directly to them from the Treasury Department, in addition to a loan that they took out from the Treasury Department. The condition on that loan and on the money that was given to them as part of a grant was you can't fire anybody. You can't have mass layoffs before September 30th. But to be clear, United and really every single airline has been forecasting that there will be job cuts down the road. So they needed this money to keep everybody employed at least through September 30th. But after September 30th, United is now saying at least 30 percent of the white collar jobs are going. You'll see thousands more in terms of frontline employees as well. And they're also trying to, as much as possible, cut the costs here. They told the machinists on Friday, your hours are going to go down 25 percent, which is contractually allowed, going from 40 hours a week down to 30 hours a week. Uh, guys, this is what the airline industry is doing right now. It has the money in place to at least keep operations and everybody employed through September 30th. But unless things change and it's not expected to anytime soon, there will be other airlines announcing similar types of job cuts in the weeks and months ahead. Hey, Phil, just in terms of being able to cut hours, does that count, too? I mean, to, to, can you take the money and then say, OK, we're not laying anybody off, but I'm going to take away 25 percent of everybody's hours? That's contractually that was contractually allowed. And there were a number of people, Senator Hall, contractually allowed by the by the by the by the contract with the, with, the with, airlines by or the contract by, with, by, but what about the, the contract between while well, you're at you now you're getting into the spirit of the law, the spirit of the law, United said at the time when they took out the CARES Act. Look, we are not going to be cutting hours or cutting pay and uh, jobs. Well, they certainly have not cut the jobs. In terms of the pay, you're getting into this gray area in terms of what's allowed under the contract, the collective bargaining agreement between the machinist union and United Airlines. And clearly, United believes that, look, we're allowed to in this contract to go from 40 hours a week guaranteed, could go as low as 22 hours a week. We've told the union you're going to go wow. down to 30 hours a week. So. Um, there, there are certainly many machinists who are not happy about this. I reached out to United over the weekend, and they said, look, this is contractually allowed. And what you have is an airline right. here, and they're not the only one, guys. I know of everyone saying, well, why is United doing this? You will see this almost with every airline, that they are doing whatever they Phil, can to cut their costs as quickly as possible. Phil, but this goes, to me, this goes back to the debate we had when we were, we were providing these loans, right. which was to say, at the time even... Internally, inside these airlines, there was an expectation that they were going to have to lay people off, even as they were taking yes. the loans. And so, yes. as we were saying, and we said it on the air many times, this program effectively saves the shareholders, but doesn't necessarily save the employees. And the whole goal, of course, was to save employees. More than anything right. else, we were trying to keep the employees in business. The airlines could have gone through bankruptcy gone out the other side and still kept the planes in the air, obviously with less employees. And so the question I have is, how do you think airline executives are going to respond to the public when, you know, 10, 20 percent, whatever percent we think are going to uh, of employees are no longer on the payrolls come this fall? I think the executives will do the same thing that they've been doing from day one. Andrew, we were at the White House when all of the airline CEOs were called in. Every single one, every single one said the same thing, which is we need to make dramatic changes. And in fact, while we were there, United was saying, look, we're going to be having a number of uh, employees, thousands of employees taking unpaid leaves of absences because we need to cut the cost dramatically immediately. And they even said at the time, Andrew, the, the money is appreciated. It is helpful to keep the operations, to keep us yep. from going into bankruptcy immediately. But we, unless things change, we will need to make changes in how many people work for each airline.
So, yeah, is there going to be backlash? Absolutely. Will people sit there and howl? Yeah. The airlines are not beloved anyhow by many people. I mean, people criticize them on a number of fronts. This will be one more where they say they took the money and now they cut the job. But to be clear, they warned right. all along these job cuts are going to be necessary. It was known It was known six weeks ago. It was known at the very time. That, yes. That was the only point I it was, was trying, known to, as, trying to Andrew, get at. It was known as they walked into the White House. It was known as they walked yep. into the White House.